Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Now then, we thought I thought I'd make a start on this jellyfish tank. I know with all this cold weather and everything else that we've had recently, it's not been very uh, easy to come out here and to glue things up and cut things because it was absolutely freezing. But now it's uh, cleared up and warmed up a little bit. I thought we'd get on with it. We've got a metre square piece of acrylic there. Now I got this from a recycling place off eBay. I'll stick it in the link section down below later on. So if you want to buy anything, anything of it i mean a piece this this size that's 10 mil if you were going to buy that clear covered each side obviously with the protective film it would cost you probably a couple of hundred pound so um, i picked these up for around 30 pound each but as you can see they're quite scratched up because it was from a crash test place so obviously they've used these in various tests so they've been scored up and uh, but they're all quite shallow they're not it's look you know most of it looks like it's just been slid on the floor the other piece is, is a little bit a little bit worse but i can cut a piece of that off and um, and what we can do then it's going to take us a bit more work to uh, to do this but it's going to be a good a uh, good way of showing you guys how to take scratches out of acrylic as well so you can uh, so you don't panic if you fancy giving anything a go or buying some sheets like this polishing them up you can make your own um you can make your own tanks it's a cheaper way to get hold of some decent acrylic to be honest just takes you a little bit more work and a bit more graft to get it up to speed before you um before you do it um, so what I've got to do now is I've got to trim this off now because I've got the big piece of acrylic pipe here I've, I've got you off the tripod today because I've got limited room as we know in this workshop but there is the jellyfish lump of tube that we've got now that's a meter square and the tube you're looking at there is 750 mil wide from side to side and that is a big old cylinder um, so I've got to trim it off down this side because I've got to make a filtration place at the base and also I'm going to do like I did on that smaller tank that if you can remember if you're if you're uh, familiar with the channel that top piece around the top there which I made that flip top lid on the other small tank which I first made that prototype one and um, so we can completely fill this with water so you don't get any little water mark along the top there so it's completely full. So I've got a filtration system in mind, but we're a bit far off from that at the moment. So what I've got to do now is just trim that off. And, um, and then we can start doing a bit of polishing and, um, and get things a bit shinier. Okay. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to saw this off. I'm going to take a strip off of each one of those to get it to a bit more of a handleable size. And it's going to give me a little bit more room in here. To work with it so i'll get that i'll save you all the uh, the noise of the saw going and i'll get back to you guys in a minute okay right guys there we go we cut that piece off now so we've got a bit more of a manageable size now cut that nice little strip off here as you can see you've got 10 mil thick acrylic there for 30 quid that wasn't bad at all for each sheet i've ripped the other one down as well so now when we put the ring back on we got like half an inch now on either side and off the edges there now we've got a good sort of six six inches i would have thought maybe yeah six and a half six and a half inches there on either side that's going to help out with the filtration system that i've got in mind so what we're going to do now is we've got to make sure this is all polished up and nice and clean before we um because if i was to glue this on here now i'm not going to get right up tight in the scratches in these corners you see so i'll make sure it's all nice and clean before we stick it on now with this reclaimed tube as well i don't know if you can see it around the edge there but it's quite rough now that's what happens when it first gets extruded from the machine i'll just stand it up for you a minute and if you can see that there but when it first comes out you can see that little bit of distortion there which i folded that paper back so you can see it but it's a bit of a rougher edge all the way around now and what they do is then they run their monstrous great circular saw across it let's try it's try having a bit of trouble there trying to focus on the edge maybe if i come down lower it will on the saw you can see the big saw blade that comes around and we've got a beautiful cut all the way around there which is fantastic so this is where the other adhesives come in 
because trying to get that level all the way around spot on is going to be a bit of a job I could put a piece of wood across there and cover it in sandpaper and then work it around and slowly cut that back but with these liquid glues with the um, it'll fill all these all these gaps in and we can flood that with the joint because don't forget it's going to be viewed through this way so this is going to be the back side the front facing side is going to be the leading edge where we're going to be looking at the jellyfish through so this side's going to be a bit more out of the way so we're never going to see this side I will sand it up a little bit try and get some of them out but you find if you start going around in a big circle like that unless I completely cover a piece of a perspex or wood in sandpaper and obviously just you know run it around smooth like that and take it down but these glues like I said they will fill up small gaps and you flood the joints with them and it'll all, it'll all melt together into one big and fuse into one big piece so uh, we haven't got to worry about that too much so now the plan is get these sanded up and get the scratches out and what I've got for that is um, is my little my little sander there my little palm sander I'm going to change the paper out from in there and I'm going to put in some uh, some wet and dry paper which I've got around in my drawer somewhere so I'm going to get that ready and we can start taking it down first we'll use probably a, a quite a coarse grit let me see if I've got any in here there we go that's the stuff I'm going to use we've got 10 sheets in each so we're going to use a 320 grit first which isn't too bad and then we're going to go right up to a 1200 grit there 1200 grit and that'll take it down even further and then I can get it all the way back down to right real polishing then and then what I'll do is I'll put some I'll put a piece of cloth in there cover it with some uh, paste and uh, give it a run over with that to give it a final polish so that is the plan so I'll speed things up now and we'll get these cleaned up okay guys what we've got now we've gone from our 320 grit to our 1200 grit and now we're up to 1500 grit which is the finest one you can well I can get here at the moment I've been given the um, I've been really doing it a lot by hand just um, going around finding out where the scratches were before I wasn't going to take you through the whole process of um, of cutting this back because it does take some time and it does take quite a lot of work to get all these scratches out some were deeper than others but as you can see now it's gone like a it's got a frosted look to it because we're covered in scratches minute micro scratches now but it's always good if you're going to cut some of this back is hold it up to the light or take it outside and you can uh, you can see the scratches and individually scribe you know sc scrape them out and then just work your way back and once I've gone all over that now with this 1500 grit I will then put some uh, cutting compound all I'm going to use on this is tea cut scratch remover from a car which is what I use which is does exactly the same thing it's a very very fine um, grit in there which takes those micro little swirls out like when you're doing your car and you see where you've polished it and you've been going like this over time and you get those little round swirls in your paintwork and basically this is exactly the same thing you're going to be just taking those little swirls out because this 1500 grit is so fine that um, it near enough polishes it back to uh, to perfectly smooth and you just keep going around and around you do see the other little scratch you've missed you can always grab some more of the 320 grit 
the 1200 grit and just rub it you know in a certain little section like that. I've just seen one there and you can just cut them out but you can feel it with your hands you can go over it with your hands you can feel it's very very smooth now so the last thing we've got to do is take off is take off the uh, those little micro scratches now what I'm going to do with this now I know a lot of people you see on YouTube and other places where you watch them they've got those round sponge um, applicators on a proper buffer and they go around like that which is awesome if you've got one of those but um, I say I don't mind a bit of work so um, what we're going to do is we're just going to cut these out but I'm going to cut out a small piece of cloth and put that on there put some of the paste on there and then just cut it back and use that as a uh, as a scratch remover tool so I've not used it before for this but I'm going to give it a go to see what happens it's all trial and error stuff and um, I'll see how, it, how nice it brings it up if it doesn't bring it up to how nice I want it then I'm going to have to get myself one of these uh, buffing pads which I used to have but I can't find it for love no money I don't know where I put it there's only a little small little a little one that I can fit to my air compressor which is a little bit noisy and with it being Sunday I don't want my neighbours chasing me around because they're trying to get a bit of sleep <laughs> so uh, we'll graft away by hand for now right guys the way I'm going to do this when you get these sanders this is a new one I've got but they come with the little pads little sanding sheet with it as well this one is uh, it's been ripped but all, I'm going, all I've done is I've just cut a piece of old tea towel like that and I've just cut around it so I can fit it in and get a rough shape as a little template for it to go in and the, the good thing about these is you can put anything in some of these have got velcro on the back you're probably familiar with and you stick various pads on but with this one I'm just going to pop that in there like that and that'll grip that open him up the other side tuck him down behind there like that and that's one thing I like about these you can put anything in them that you like just with the clamps and then now we've got like a smooth pad where we can put this stuff on and just buff it around in circles like that now when you get this stuff obviously give it a good shape because it's got it's got the very fine dust in it which does cut down and make the scratches disappear and you want that fully suspended in the uh, in the solution that it's in in the paste so give it a good old shake about and then just put various little blobs around the place Just get a bit of it and soak it into that tea towel. And you can get a good old coating on there then before you start it up. I'm going to speed things up to you now because this is quite loud and I don't want you uh, getting deaf and getting bored watching me polish these out because it's not going to be a five minute job. It's going to take some time so if I speed it up it'll go quicker for you guys.
got to a stage now where it's not too too bad and um, we're a lot clearer than we were before pretty much scratch free just some very very fine scratches still which is going to take a little bit more time and polishing to get out but that's all part of the game and there's nothing better than buying something which is all scratched up like this making it look like new again making something DIYing something and um, and it sticks in the old brain then it's something you're going to be proud of later on when you're looking at the tank you're not just looking at it as if you just bought it from the shop you've got that build process and how you built it in your head every time as you look at the tank as well as looking at all the fish and different things that you've got in there as well so it's a nice memory there when you make something yourself anyway guys I'm going to leave it at there we're going to leave it there for today um, as you can see we're a lot clearer than we were we've got a few little micro scratches in amongst that not too too many hit that little button there to subscribe to Mark's Aquatics this is Simon from South Africa sent me these towels a few months back now and they're still coming in very very handy and um, cheers for that matey if you're watching the video really still appreciate that a lot means a lot to me that does anyway guys take care of yourselves if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button like I said notification bell and all that stuff share it with your mates and um, as always you're all stars love you loads take care and I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics bye for now just me and my guitar.